The goat is on the roof. <laughs> Ever since I could conceive of the idea of dog, <laughs> I knew that's what I wanted in my life. <laughs> and after four long canineless years, <laughs> my mom brings home a six week old golden retriever puppy that we named Goliath, which was the greatest gift any four year old could ask for. Now that woman. My mother <laughs> not get a lot right, but she got this right. And Goliath and I became best pals. We went through puppyhood together. I even ate his food sometimes, <laughs> just to make sure he was getting the good stuff. When he licked me in the face, I licked him in the face right back. That's the kind of family this was. <laughs> North Carolina that my mom would take us to every summer for her hippie retreats. <laughs> and this farm had everything. It had fields for running, it had trees for climbing, it had chickens for loving, <laughs> which no matter how many times I fed or proclaimed my love to, did not want to be my friends. <laughs> farm, there was this big house that I call the Big Hippie House, where we stayed and slept on the floor with all of my mom's old lady friends. <laughs> and I say they're old, because I'm nine. <laughs> and my mom's friends were middle-aged star children that never quite outgrew the 70s. And they were here for healing seminars <laughs> and communing with nature and smoking peace pipes, which was just weed. <laughs> and as a nine-year-old kid, and the only kid on this farm, I didn't care about any of that, because Goliath and I, had our own plans, big plans. We were going to run through the fields until we collapsed. We were going to jump into the creek and play with the water fairies. We were gonna try our hand at chasing dragonflies. <laughs> and when the sun was setting and our adventures were coming to a close, we'd go back to the house to hang out with my mom. <laughs> of the big heavy house, staring at goats in silence. And the goats were doing this thing, where they would jump on top of the roof of the shed in their pen, and they would stay there for a moment, and they'd jump off. <laughs> And when they did this, my mother broke the silence and said, the goat is on the roof. <laughs> now at the time, I didn't know what this meant. Maybe it was just a colloquialism that was carried over from her youth. Maybe it was a phrase born on the trip. Maybe it was just an old Polish saying that no one really understood. <laughs> but we kept saying it. And what it came to mean was hope is on the horizon. Everything is going to be okay and we will get through it. Which makes sense. Because in the world of a goat, when you're on top of a roof, everything is a-okay. Goats love climbing stuff. <laughs> and no matter how many times we came back to this farm, that phrase was the only thing that we took with us when we left. And we would say it whenever times got tough. Times were tough a lot, but so long as one of us could see hope in that situation, we would say, the goat is on the roof and we would get through it. 
And we kept going back to this farm, and Goliath and I kept having epic adventures in the wild unknown. And my mom kept doing her thing. <laughs> but the last time we went back, if I wanted to go braving in the wilderness with only my wits and my canine companion to accompany me, I had to just take my wits. If I wanted to do anything outside of the big hippie house, I had to do it alone. Because that year, Goliath had a splint on his leg. Because right before we left the trip, the vet had found a tumor in his paw. Mm -hmm. And so he couldn't run or play or go on adventures with me. Instead, he had to stay in the big hippie house and either be watched by me or my mom's old lady friends. And the latter was way too much of a gamble, more so than I was comfortable with. <laughs> So I watched him for that trip. And this year, I wasn't a puppy anymore. I had to be responsible. <laughs> it was different. I didn't like it. <laughs> and when we left that year, Goliath still couldn't run still couldn't play, and still couldn't have adventures, because all he wanted to do was chew on the splint, and I had to make sure he didn't do that. But it was okay, because the goat was on the roof, right? We took him back to the vet, and she told us, it's not just his paw. The cancer is throughout his whole body and we were gonna have to make the decision to put him down. But we could be there when she did it, if we wanted to be. And we didn't want to be there. So we sat in the room, the vet gave him the shot, and she waited a moment. She said, okay, he's gone. My mother, by this point, is distraught. She is crying. She is shattered by this event. She is gross. <laughs> and I am just sitting there. I'm staring quietly at my friend who is there, but is not there. And I stayed quiet all the way back to the car. <clears throat> And by this point, my mother resented me entirely. And she says, what is wrong with you? The dog is dead. Don't you feel anything? Why aren't you crying? And I said, well, mom, he's not suffering anymore. He can run, play, adventures, just like we used to. He's just doing it someplace else now. The goat is on the roof. 